Hello guys, welcome to EasyTV International and also welcome to another IT episode. Um, today, I, I'll show you guys like uh, how you can uh, configure this in cluster with um, nested ESXi. So if you don't have enough resource, how you can uh, configure um, vSim cluster. So for vSim cluster minimum, you need three node. So three node means you have to have three physical ESXi hosts. But if you don't have it, then how you can practice it? So if you have only one server on top of that, you're gonna install first ESXi on your first, uh, on your physical host. And on top of that, you can create a uh, nested ESXi. But in my environment, I have three physical hosts. I have already um, configured base and cluster on my physical ESXi host. But I'll, I'll show you guys how you can create uh, nested ESXi on top of the ESXi host. And then um, how you can con configure or create new uh, BSIM cluster on your nested ESXi. That's what I will show you guys today. Uh, let's go. Let me start. So, um, minimize this one. So, this is my vCenter server. Um, here is my host. I have three hosts. And I have already vSense cluster configured, if you can see here. So, this is this vSense data series on my. Uh, physical server, like my, I utilize my physical server, local storage. I created a, a RAID, RAID 1. So that's how I configured this one. But today I'm gonna show, like I will show you guys like how you can create first your uh, nested ESXi and then uh, some uh, VLAN configuration and also the VM, uh, also the nested ESXi host configuration and after that, we'll create a vSAN. So for vSAN, um, each and every host, you, you need at least minimum three types of data store, um, disk drive. So if it is a physical, then you can create separate RAID system inside the physical host, like on the local storage. But in our case, it is a virtual machine like nested ESXi. So nested ESXi, you can add storage. You can add more storage, whatever you want. So I'll show you with uh, three separate storage I'll add on my virtual machine. So one storage, uh, one disk drive I will add for installing ESXi. Another one I will install for, another one I will install for um, uh, cache tier. And another one that I'll do for capacity tier. Because for creating a vSIM cluster, it is required to have at least two disks in each host. So let me start. Um, so this is my nested environment. Uh, I have already installed one ESXi host. Let me install the second one. Uh, I'm going to power off this one because this is not working. Power off. Uh, basically, I configure a template. Let me show you the template. Um, this is the template, master ESXi template. So this one has all kind of configuration. I'm going to edit and I can show you guys. It's very simple. You just go to uh, create a virtual machine and just put a name. That's it. I need it because I need uh, I need to deploy more than ten. Uh, nested ESXi. So I don't want to do everything from the scratch for each and every nested ESXi. That's why I created the templates. You can do that with the same thing. So first assign the CPU, like how many, um, in my case, okay, uh, that's one. So in my physical server, I have total um, um, two socket with 16 core each, so that means I have total 32, um, 32 CPU. So I can go maximum 32. So 
So now when I select it by default, it comes like this socket four and eight. It's not a right configuration because I don't have four socket. I have two socket. I have to make it two. So if I go for 16, then it's gonna be two socket with 16. Cool. This is the right configuration and CPU hot plug, enable CPU hot plug at hotter. You can do that one because in the future, if you need more, if you need to increase um, on the fly, you can do that. If you don't have check mark on it, you cannot do that. The same thing on um, airflow. One thing you have to remember when you configure um, any virtual machine, uh, set up virtual machine for installing SXI to creating your nested SXI environment, make sure you check mark on hardware virtualization. Mask, mask, mask. You have to do that. And then memory depends on you, it depends on your resource. And hard drive, see here, I added hard disk 10 gig for uh, SXI OS installation. It's, it's not required more than that. If you have more space, you can assign, but um, I, I did the minimum one. Um, hard disk, another hard disk I added with 20 gig. And this 20 gig is for I will make a plan uh, for test here <clears throat> for creating a uh, uh, decent cluster. So decent cluster require uh, at least one disk for test tier and the one is for capacity tier. If you have more disk, you can add on the cap capacity tier. So it will increase your storage capacity. But for cache tier, you cannot use it. So at least you have, you have to have one cache tier. And uh, network drive adapter. Network adapter, you can add as much as you want, but for any virtual machine, you will have maximum 10 uh, network adapter. But in our case, we don't need that much. Uh, I added 12.6. But the only thing I have to change, which is, um, I'll have to, okay. So I'm not gonna do that on here. And data store, you have to select the location of your uh, file and uh, like your ISO file. So I already, uh, I already um, show the connections of my ISO file and I'll make sure you have connect, uh, check mark on connect. So this is my template. I'm going to make it a, embody to the template. So it's very simple. This, now it's a virtual machine, it's part of, and I just name it as a template. It's just name, nothing else. And I'm magnetic to template. So go to the template right button on the machine and then go to the template and convert to template. So th this will be uh, my template. In future, if I need, I can depart from there. Like I can just need to right click on it, new VM from this template. That's how I can deploy as much as I want. All right, so uh, I have already deployed two. So one is this one. Let me power off this one also. I want to change some configuration on, on my first host. This one is already installed in SXI. I just need to increase uh, CPU. So my CPU is about 32. Uh, but 32, if you have to expand it, otherwise you cannot see, see the configuration is not right. You have to go back to 16 and then 16 and two. 16 is core, our socket, and socket is number two. All right. Uh, everything else is perfect. But the other thing is uh, network adapter. So I have created I have created a network adapter. Oh, sorry, I didn't. Before I do that, let me let me go to uh, create a, a VLAN for, because I want to put my necessary success host in a separate subnet, except to complete my separate subnet. So my um, my main master host is XI, the physical one is in my 192.168.1.0 subnet. And for for the nested one, I plan a different subnet. That's why I, um, I'm going to create a separate VLAN for that. And so I'm going to the network section. And this is my distributed switch. So if you have a distributed switch, you have a lot of flexibility to create um, uh, 
distributed port group. And as you can assign a VLAN for that. You can make a separate network for that. And it's very, it's pretty simple. Um, I'll show you guys how you can deploy a distributed switch in another video. By the way, uh, if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel and also click the bell, bell icon. That's how you get my uh, next video or uh, latest video. Uh, all right, so uh, this is my distributed switch. I'm going to right click, um, then new distributed port group. So I'm going to name it e, e VLAN. Whatever name if you want, whatever name, it's not like mandatory. Whatever name you want, you can put it. But all let's try to do uh, maintain your standard, your company standard. So um, how many port groups I want? Let's say 16. Doesn't matter. VLAN type is VLAN. And uh, VLAN ID is 65. Next. All right, it's finished. So the VLAN is created, but the other, the other thing is only just for nested is excited. Just remember, the regular VLAN creation is done. You don't need to do anything else. But for, um, for, um, for the near nested ESXi host, if you want to use a, any VLAN for nested ESXi host, make sure you have to change the security configuration. So I'm going to right click on uh, newly created VLAN and I'm going to edit settings and go to the security. So for, for the security wise, by default, promiscuous mode will be rejected, MAC address change will be rejected, forget transmit will be rejected because of the security issue and by default is rejected. But if you want to use that VLAN for uh ESX host, make sure, make sure you accept promiscuous mode and also forget transmit, accept, and then hit open. So why you need it? Because whenever you use it, and if you create any virtual machine on this network, it will not able to communicate with your router, like the way you are getting internet uh, through your uh, ISP, because your ISP is connected with your main router, and your main router is in a different network. So that's why you have to accept it. In that way, your new virtual machine on this VLAN will get internet. All right. So security wise actually is not secure. It's, it's not like, it's not that much secure, but it's secure, but it's not that much secure. If you enable, um, if you accept from this case mode. But um, anyway, we are doing master GSX site for uh, practicing for home lab. Because in physical environment, like uh, sorry, in the enterprise environment, in the real environment, you will not be able to see any nested effects environment. So it's just for practice for your homework. All right, so we already configured the VLAN. Now I'm going to going back to host and cluster options and my first host, I'm going to edit and changing the network from VM network to browse. Just you need to click on browse and then VLAN, the one I just created, okay, and network adapter, browse, VLAN, okay, All right, network adapter, browse, VLAN, okay, so all adapter is connected, so this is all our bus tool, what will be happening if you think this bus tool as a physical, that means in physically you have total four NIC card, network port, and each and every port. So in here is connect check mark. That means you have a cable. Physically it has a cable. So virtually it's easy. You don't need any physical cable. You just need to check mark on connect. That's it. Uh, browse EVLAM. Okay. Browse. 
e villain ok all right Browse. So I'm, I'm done with all six. Hit OK. And I can power it up. Just give one second because it just finished. Right click, power on. So this E6 I already installed. So OK, uh, host two, OK. It's just going to be load because ESX has been already installed. Okay, all right. Right click it right here. Just click on this window and then we'll have options for web console. Click OK. So we'll be able to see what's going on. All right. So next second host. Now I'm going to configure, but I don't have any more host. It's just a VM. So before I power on, let me configure everything in its settings. VM option, make sure boot option is BIOS mode. Okay. And then hardware is CPU. I need to change the CPU configuration to 32. And then this one, 16. And make sure hardware restoration is enabled and uh, memory whatever you want and also in the memory side make sure click memory hot plug so in that case when you have memory hot plug is enabled that means on the fly if you need more memory you can increase it so i think uh, everyone you should do that and hardware disk 10 gig same as the first one hard disk 10 gig i I, I, I make a plan for this one, like I want to install SXI on this disk drive. And then the second disk is 20 gig. Um, I will use this 20 gig for um, when I create a um, B, uh, vSIM, you guys remember, for creating a vSIM cluster, it's must you have to have two drives in each. Uh, uh, and so I actually have three disks. One disk I already used for uh, I, I use all I will be used for uh, SXI installation. So rest two disk I will use for this cluster configuration. So one of the disk is for cache tier, another one disk will be capacity tier. So it actually the capacity tier uh, space you will be able to access. So that's why I assign 400 gig for third one, which I, I, which I make a plan for um, assigning as a uh, capacity tier and the beam network same thing is just browse and the network VLAN okay okay browse VLAN this one okay browse VLAN okay browse Vlan, okay. Browse. Vlan, okay. Browse. Vlan, okay. So I have here all these things. Now it's time to. Install the SXI, right? Okay, let me show you how I'm going to install the SXI. So just right click on it, go to the power options, and it's looking for which host I want to. Okay, let me put it on host number one. Okay. See, it's changed host. Before it was on host three, now it's host one. All right. So just open this one console. See, it's looking for installing the SXI. So it's loading. It check it will check a little bit time. And in the meantime, I can prepare my third host. Okay, so third host, same way, it's just repeating uh, edit settings. 
make sure PM options, default options is uh, BIOS. Then actual harder CPU. I'm going to change the CPU to 32. And copper socket. How I'm going to change this from 32? Because it depends on your physical environment. My physical, uh, my my environment, my physical machine has total um, two socket, and each socket has 16 core. That means I have total 32 core, right? So I, I, I can have maximum 32. So core per socket. Now this configuration is not right. By default, it's not right. So you have to make a change based on your resource. So I can go with 16 core because I have maximum 16 and two socket. CPU hot plug enable. Make sure hardware solution is enabled. And memory, make sure you enable memory hot plug. And, 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 and same thing, okay. So this one, actually I change it, so let me, let me remove it. Let me remove this one because I don't want this one. And add a new hard disk. And this one, I will use on the template. All right. So it's look like this one is showing as a number two. Okay, fine. And listen, okay. That is store, this is the that is store, okay. And net, now network. So same thing, browse. Okay, same thing, the same way, just repeating all the steps again and again. So I, I can change it on my template, but I didn't change my template because I'm going to use eVLAN only for this three host. Later on, I will deploy another three host and that's going to be in a different, different VLAN. That's why I didn't add on my um, template. And for a uh, CD drive, data store ISO file is selected. And also on the data store, I have uploaded um, ESXi 6.7 update 2 version ISO file. So I just show here. It's already pointed here. That's why I don't need to see, and this is the location. And make sure, make sure, of course, uh, you have to have check mark on this connect. Otherwise, you will not be able to. So configuration wise, everything is done. Just click OK. So this is my card host, right? So I'm going to um, call on this host. And this one also, I want to power on. Uh -oh. Show actually, I didn't want. I want to migrate it to host number two. So it's on host two, right click, hold on. So basically I'll show you like everything from the scratch. So from starting to end. Uh, 
Oh, right. This power on that's in the chain. Oh, okay. So I have to do one, uh, one more thing. And figure, because um, for the host, this one is moving to, see, one problem. This DM is moving to, oh, this, 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 this one. But that's it. Let me check which DM is here. Okay, one, two, it's fine. And I'm fine. I don't need to do anything about it. So this one also open it. So number two and number three, I need to install. So go back to number two. Number two is like if put it up and then give me options to install. So if you look at on the screen, it says well, welcome to VMware SXS 6.7.0 installation and blah 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 blah. And then it says Stay for cancel and enter for continue. So our target is to enter, uh, continue. So hit enter. And then F11 to accept, F11. It will take time. In the meantime, we can go back to host three. Oh, it's, it's still good enough. Uh, okay, all right. So host number two, um, it has total three this way. So the 10 gig one, I have a plan to install. Uh, is a side. So to enter to continue. We're going to scan the storage. We can create a partition. All right. So um, before I, it's not first time I tried. It. I tried it yesterday also. That's why it has already created some files on the desk. That's why it says existing or it has existing. So I'm going to override it with enter and put a password, whatever password you want. And click enter. Okay, F11 for installation. Just hit F11 from the keyboard. It's installing. And now I, I'm, I'm <clears throat> come back to host three, the same way, same process, enter install F11, the same way. That way we did for host two. Now we do host three, the same thing. This master is excited. Okay. So can be, yeah, the yellow one is selected one. If you want, you can just move. With the keyboard arrow, you can move here and there. So our target is 10 and Canon is already selected. Just hit enter and then use it and then use the password. Okay, so all right, hit enter. F11 for install and it starts installing. Not one of that long. Okay, in the meantime, we can look for host two. So host two installation is done. And also if you look at on the instruction, um, the yellow mark, is, it says remove the installation media before rebooting. So it's required to reboot because installation is done. Now before you remove it, yeah, before you reboot it, make sure you disconnect that uh, SXI so far because if you don't disconnect it, whatever is booted up is going to start inst install again. So if you don't disconnect it, it's going to install again and again, whatever, whatever you boot it. Because as a human, you know, you already installed, but the machine, whenever it's found any disk on the CD drive, it, it will not think you are trying to install something. It is found in the bootable file. So that's why you need to remove it. Okay, let's go to the uh, vCenter server, post number two, right click on it, go to the edit option. If it is physical machine, you just need to push the bottom and see gonna come out. But this is not physical machine, this is the virtual machine. In that case, you have to go to the CD drive options and um, you can disconnect it or, and also, also you can do 
from here, the client device, so it's gonna just turn automatically to the pocket. And for this one, same thing, right click. Okay, okay. before I do that, I need to check it. Oh, it's not done yet. Make sure it's done. All right, so you can go back to post number two and you can hit enter for the book because you already removed the media, right? All right, go back to host number three. It's done. It's done means we have to remove it, right? The same way we did for host number two. So right click on it, host number three, go to the edit option. And go down. Instead of the registration file, if you can select client device, it's gonna disconnect and click OK. So we disconnect, right? And then go back to the web browser and hit enter. Okay, so the host number two is booting boot now. And uh, host number one is already booted up, see? If you click the step button, you will be see. All right, so 65. Now we have to make a plan actually which IP we're gonna sign for our first e 6 host and second one and third one. So if I open, um, let's see, file. Let me show you here on that C file. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm going to. Okay, anyone, anyone. Uh -oh. Something wrong with my office program. Okay, let's, let's do one thing. Um, Okay, I'll try it later. All right, so if I open a notepad, let's do one thing. Uh, open, I'm going to open my Google Drive. That will help me to create a uh, drive. Google Drive. All VLAN. So for all VLAN here, right? And so E VLAN, E VLAN 65, right? The sub 65, this one. So how many IPs I can get it through this? 192.168.65. One, right? The first one is 4 the last one is for gathering. And there we go on. You can do more, right? Up to 255, right? All right, we have enough. I don't need too much right now. So make sure when you do some configuration, you have to have it in like a spreadsheet open. And also you have your uh, IP address available. So the whole subnet is brand new. So every all the IP is now available. So I'm selecting IP11 for fast post. Post. And this one. And then call this for host number two and host number three. That's how you complete the right. 
All right. So, what's the default gathering? It's 10 dots, sorry. It's 168 dot, 65 dot, one is default gathering, right? And 255.255.255.0 because it's 24 subnet. This is the subnet mask and DNS. Finally, DNS. So for the DNS, let me see here which DNS I have right now. For Red Week of June, DNS. Right. I have some record here. I I need to delete this record. First, delay. And this one, delay. Okay. All right. Um. So in here, I'm going to create three hoster record. New hoster record. Um, it's gonna be nested, nested, e host zero one. I think we will make a copy. Nested e host zero one, and IP will be one one dot one sixteen dot one dot. Sorry, not one actually. Uh, sixteen dot sixty five dot. Done. And create. All right. It's done. So one record I have created, but make sure on the reverse lookup zone. I have the zone, so I have already a zone. One ninety one sixty sixty five. Eleven has a pretty record. The one I just created. Now go back to the main uh, for a lookup zone. I need to create two more. So new host record. Um, the same thing, it's just on the two host. So nest and nest and host. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. And IP addresses. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, now another one is three and I think one to the one sixty eight dot sixty five dot IP right yeah. all right so it's done so we only created DNS entry for this new brand new three host you can create on your environment the same way and also we have a PTF record here. Uh, if I can refresh it, you will be able to see three record as a reverse lookup gem. Um, now, what else? Oh, uh, no, go back here. So the DNS, DNS will be. One two dollar one sixty eight dot one dot two, which is my domain controller. So I have two domain controller. Three DNS primary DNS primary DNS and alternate DNS. A DNS and this is the gateway. Gathering user submit mask submit mask. All right. So that's what we need to mention. Uh for host one host piece. So now we can start the configuration because our all host is online. All right. So host number one. 
Let's start with this one. How are you gonna configure it? The step button, then it will show you this screen, yellow and black. So on all the way bottom, F2, it says customize system relax and F12 is shut down or restart. So we're gonna do some customization because we need to, right now the IP, we get it uh, through the DHCP server, which is 65.213. Um, you're gonna change it. This is our plan. So hit F2 and then you have to log in with your password. You need the username and dollar sign. Okay. All right. So we just logged in, right? And configuration. Move to configure uh, configure management network. Hit enter. Network adapter. So in here, I have total six unique network card or network port, you can say. Um, if I want to have a redundant network, I can add one more network, but still by default, it's gonna select the first net card, activity card, which is connected. Um, you can configure your management network on that one. If, uh, and if you want redundant, you can just go the second one. So two net card will make, or like as a redundant for the management. So I select two and hit enter and then VLAN. So VLAN, you can specify any VLAN number. So that is actually host only work with that VLAN. But we want to support all kinds of VLANs if in future we want to create more VLAN on under this uh, SXI, maybe you can support all those. So that's why it's better to have like uh, so for supporting all VLANs, you can assign four zero. Nine five. So how you know that? You just need to read it. It's in here. It says VLAN ID one two four zero nine four or four zero nine five to access all VLANs, which we, which we get right. And hit enter and hit enter. So now the VLAN is changed. And now go to next option. I think before configuration. And um, by default, first one is selected. Through the arrow key, go down, go down, and hit space button, then it will be selected. And then through the arrow key, go down, and last arrow key, and with the back space, remove that one, and put the last one, uh, because I don't need to write down all things. It's already there. 192.168.65.11, right? Or fast ones. And default get and everything is there. I don't need to do anything, right? Hit enter. IPv6 configuration. We are not using IPv6, so the first option is already selected. You just need to hit space bar to select it. And then hit enter. That's it. It's disabled. <clears throat> On the right side, if you look at the status, it shows disabled. All right. So DNS configuration. Now it's time to configure the DNS. By default, the first option is safe. Obtain DNS server address and host automatically. But we want to change it, right? So select the second option and let the uh, um, yeah, just press your space bar on from your keyboard. And then you have options to modify. Okay. So primary DNS is number two, you know already. And alternate DNS, we have two DNS server, right? So we can change it to uh, number three. And host name. So host name we <clears throat> make a plan like um, master e post zero one right <clears throat> and then custom DNS suffix. So custom DNS suffix means your domain name. So domain name is ls.com. I will do the same thing, then dot com. I'm done. So configuration wise, I'm done. Whenever you're done, just Press escape button and then it will ask you, do you want to change it? Yes, I give for change. Press Y and it's gonna be video. So same way, same way I have to do on host number two, escape button. So I'll do it very quickly. 
because I already showed on the first one, <clears throat> F2, and then um, my password, and uh, enter. Configuration, control management network, enter, and then select the second one also, with enter, and VLAN is 0.095, enter, and then I put four, and I'm going to for the third one, and then this one is my second host, so it's going to be number 12, hit enter, and then I put six configuration, we are not using that one, disable this one. Then render and go to DNS settings. So you can customize the DNS settings. For the primary DNS, you may use the same one. For the second one, you can change it to number three, which is our second domain controller. And then um, hostname. So this hostname is um, NAS chat, NAS chat uh, e host site, mm -hmm. host 02. And then DNS suffix is domain name dls.com. So in, in my case, my domain name is dls, that's why I put in dls.com. But in your case, if it is different, what is different? Okay, and I'm, configuration is I'm done. I'm going to uh, skip this one. And then, yes, I want to save it. And this will be good. All right. So the first one is already rebooted, it's just booting, it's rebooted, and then third one. Same way, same process, you hit the escape button, then you have options and hit F2 from your keyboard, then put your password, enter. I know this is gonna be a long video, but it will help you because I start from the scratch. So from starting to end, Configure management network, right? Hit enter, network adapter. Uh, we can select two, uh, two new card for read and read and we see. And then hit enter, VLAN, we know, right? For 095, and hit enter, enter, okay. And go for IPv4. And we can select the card options because we want to customize it. And our plan for the card IP is 13. And Subtle mask is fine, default together is fine, hit enter, and go to IPv6, IPv6 we want to disable it, select disable, and then uh, go to that, DNS part, same configuration I'm doing over and over, because um, that's why I'm not studying too much. Um, primary DNS is number two, right? Our first domain controller, the second one is number three, and the host name, host name is Mr. Uh, yes, XI. No, sorry, not this XI. Nested, nested e host JFT. Nested e host JFT. Okay. And hit enter. And then the suffix is DLS.com. Hit enter. Configuration is done. I need to press the escape button. And then <clears throat> press Y for yes and change it and we will, okay? So, um, I'm almost done with that. This is a host based configuration. So my first host is already booted up if you look at on the screen. See, it's now, it's 11, right? And this one is 12 and this one is, it is in the um, e body. So make sure I have connections. Let me ping it. Let me ping it, right? Uh, we'll go to the power show. Yep, you can do the power show. Or, or you can do the Go to the CMD. Right click. Run. And let me stay. Yes. So I'm going to check the connections. Ping. And dot, sorry, not ten. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot sixty five dot. Now, right, it's pinging. 
I'm getting you done, right? It's, it's pinging. I'm dead. It's, same as 12, right? So it's pinging, which is good. And the third one, which is 13, it's not very up yet. Right? Maybe I cannot. I cannot ping it right now because, see, oh, yes, it's almost done. That's why it's pinging. So 13 is done. Now I need to check the DNS, the one we, uh, uh, like we already created a DNS entry, right? So I need to do NS lookup, NS lookup, NS lookup, what? Um, <clears throat> NS tab is, um, what? NS tab, E, post, 01, dot, VLS, dot, VLS, dot, right? Just see, I got the return return value is um, 92.168.65.11. So, through the DNS team, I got the IP address, which is forward, uh, um, forward lookup zone and reverse lookup zone. What's the reverse lookup zone? Instead of if you uh, run NS lookup and type the IP address, and uh, sorry, not. 192.168.65.11 and you get the domain name, which is master master host. You will run. That means with this uh, command, you're you're getting reverse lookup zone response. So we checked forward lookup zone, we checked reverse lookup zone, and we get the reply. Now test another one. Cool. See, it's post number two, right? And now so this one is through the IP address if you get anything, that means you're getting from reverse lookup zone, right? And uh, now try with NEST instead in post, which is a tool, dot ELS dot com enter. Now you get the IP address, right? Now test the third one. So what you have to do, change the number. Three, right? So what Third one, the yeah, DNS name is nested post 03.dls.com, right? You can enter. All right, you get the reply. So we check. How about lookup chain uh, for the third host? And for the third host, let me check the reverse lookup chain. 192.168.64.30, right? You got it. So we check our DNS stops and everything is done. And also the host is running, right? Now it's time to add. So we have a B center. On the B center, let me create a cluster, add a host. So before I add a host, let me create a cluster, or you can add the host first and then you can create a cluster. You can move the machine to the cluster. You can do it later or you can do it right now. So I'm going to create a cluster. Uh, I'm sorry, on the data center. So new cluster. Um, BSPO DRS, BSPO Venture, BSEN. So everything you can you can create, you can enable right now or you can uh, enable it later on. So I'm not gonna enable right now, I'm just gonna create a class, simple cluster. I'll just put a cluster name, that's it. So uh, I'll make the cluster name um, uh, e-host cluster. Just name it e host. Mm. Oh, you can say e host. E host cluster. All right. So, okay. So we just we just created a cluster and just put the name. Actually, nothing configured. So right click on the cluster and add a host. And so FQDN, what is the FQDN? Mm -hmm. Host, no, sorry, it's nested. 
and yes to the nested. So you can add the host to the IP address or to the DM, FQDM. So we already created a DNS entry and we have a FQDM, which is nested e host 01.ELS.com, right? And I need to copy this one because I don't want to write them in again. So the second one is simply just need to change the number and two and then number three. All right, the username is root, is root, this one is root, this one is root. Oh, sorry, this one not. This one not. Okay, and the password. And this one. And this one. All right, so we are done with the password, username, and, and the host FQ here. Click next. And select, you, you can select individually or you can select here, then we're gonna select all three. You click OK. This extra version and everything is here. Next. Click finish. So it's adding three hosts on the cluster. Enter the exit maintenance mode, okay. All right, so what was the problem here? Sign certificate of the host three and host one, okay. Let me add one by one, add a host. Good. General system will occur in level two to sign certificate to host two. Oh, wow. Try to add with the IP address. So you have 65 dot. All right, there is some issues. Let me fix it. All right, so we are able to add all three hosts. So whenever you add any host on the cluster, we're gonna add as a maintenance mode. So you have to Exit from the maintenance mode. Just right click on the host and go to maintenance mode and exit the maintenance mode. Yeah. All right. 
So now these two holes, it has a management network and real network, right? So for creating, for creating, um, for creating vSend, you need to have VM kernel code. So you can use the management mode because by default, whenever you create, configure the first time you set your host, uh, VM kernel was created. So you can use the management network as a um, VSend network, uh, which is not recommended because for the storage, you should have separate network, separate um, adapter. Um, this one, this one, you can see. Uh, we, all management part is going through this training part. So we have available new card and we can create another VM kernel. We can, we can create a separate switch or with the existing suite, you can create a whole group for uh, only for um, passing uh, base and profit or our storage profit. So you can create a standard switch or you can create a receiver switch. I will show you guys how you can do the receiver switch. All right. Um, here's a lot of things that together. Um, I'm going to create a receiver switch. All right, because we have already a few distinct switch. But we need to have the network, right? The code group. Right. In here, I have already distinct switch. We just need to create a code group. Or we can create a standard switch. How are we going to create a standard switch? So if he wants to create something, you have to create under each and every one. So let me do one thing. For the motion traffic, for um, ice cavity traffic, for decent traffic, all three traffic will send it to um, one standard switch. Let me clear the switch. So how are we going to clear the standard switch? Select our first one. The first option. And okay. BM kernel adapter, right? We need a BM kernel adapter. Okay. Next. Select an existing switch or select an uh, SE standard switch or new single switch. If you want, you can create a new single switch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Completely different. Next, add adapter. So we need to and we need to. This is done. Okay. And if you want, you can do standby. Just you can do standby. And if you can quit, you can then you can do that too. Yes. So network level. So this one we are creating for um, this and right? this and okay, this and this and right? So you need to add the four, and for this end, you have to make a time. You have to assign IP address. So for this end, what kind of IP address you can use for this end? So this end IP address for the first host, you can select this one.
So we can start from twenty one. All right, is a little. It depends on how you want to select it. So in the three, in the three. Okay. So 21, 22, 23. All right. And here, I think we so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you don't to change anything else. Okay. Okay. So you just configure this, right? Sorry, you just you just. You just Created a BM kernel for you with, with, with separate switch, switch number one. And you add to network. All right. And then, second thing, you have to do the same thing, same way. BM kernel. Um, new single switch, next. Add to the card. this one. And that is on and this one. You can see all the numbers are fine. Next. And I can do four. So I'm going to select from two lights. And this. And that. And finish. Okay. So, and the switch is the scale of this one, right? So, for this one, we have this one. And for two, we have already this one. And number three, we can do this one. Okay. Yeah, we can. For uh, group, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So, the end kind of for group, we need to create. New standard switch, next, add, network, okay, and then click next, this end, and for the three. So if you want to create a VM kernel, you have to have a assign, you have to assign your IP address for each one. All right. So we have created single switch on the cloud host also. Um, All right, so expand it, expand it. Oh, we need to modify this a bit. It should be B, this one. All right. So we have created the BM color code group on a single switch, separate single switch for all three modes. Now we need to configure this in the rest, right? So if you select the cluster and if you go to the data store, right now you have only three data stores. There are still one, one, two, four, the that is it is. One point nine gigahertz because it will be I sent ten um ten gigabit for the one you six five. So you six five OS, like um, that is some um, 
utilize some storage. That's why it's like only capacity should be given five and two is one point two nine. Uh, so our plan is to create a decent cluster, right? So we have each and every host. We have some uh, other some uh, data store. So we're gonna use that one to create a decent. So select the cluster, enter configuration. And one thing you have to make sure if you have PRS or um, high availability, high availability is enabled, you have to make it. Uh, you have to turn it off. When you can figure that, decent. So this is a decent option, decent service. So this one is turned off right now. So we are going to configure it. We configure. So we're going to do single side cluster. Click next. Click next. We don't need to change anything on here. Click next. Now this mode, we have to put the holes. All right. So. Each and every host has two codec, right? Which is on, which is not playing here. Okay. Let me see. Okay. So the 20 gig you're going to use for cache, but it is required for BCM one of the drive, which one you want for, um, you want, which one, which uh, data store you want to. Use the storage. If you know that the storage you want to assign for uh, test here, it has to be flash. So you have to mark as flash. And then you can say test here. And, and then the capacity one, you can have HDB or also you can have flash. All flash is fine, or you can do the mix mode. It's not a problem. So Host zero two, or we are done. Host zero, this is the host zero one. So 20 gig is only to make it a test here. So that's why you change the mark as flash and say test here. And uh, the street here is the uh, big one, which is 400 gig. And now the third one. So the third one, 20 gig, we're going to make it as a flash and test here. And, and the big one is absolutely here. So we are done, right? So all the cast here is usable. Sorry, all the capacity here is usable. So we have 400, 400, 400. That means um, 1,200 gig, so 1.17. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, 1,200 gig, which is next. 1.17 terabyte. This is easily. And if you have more desk, if you add later on, you can then you can come here and configure it like that. Right? First here, you're gonna add on your existing one. You're gonna increase this capacity. So click next and create the fault in the main. So we're not doing anything here. Just click on next and click finish. We're going to create this in cluster. Just wait a little bit. It will take a little bit of time. All right, look like it's, oh, it's not done yet. Still, it's working, see, they like almost done. It's like almost done. Let's see, oh, it's still working. 
Thank you, send that as well. It's still working. So I'm almost done. Let's see a little bit. All right. So now, the host cluster, and it has a three SX seven. All three SX the hosts, it looks like a physical host, but actually it's not a physical. It's a lost room. That's why it's, we call it nested because I have the physical layer, ESX5. On top of that, I have first two ESX5. That's called the two layer of ESX5 that we call nested ESX5. So, configuration is we are done. We have successfully configured DSM data storage with 1.7 terabyte of storage we have right now. So you know simply that you can create bus position here and there. So you know bus position, here in your bus position, you can name it whatever to the scats. You can say where, uh, uh, anyhow. Anyhow, okay. click next. Data store, decent data store, click next. Windows, Windows 20, 16, next. I'm not going to change it, it's just I'm just going to show you like the if you get it to it or you not be not be able to do it. Click next. And also you can select here uh, this PNP network inside this cluster. Okay. Yeah. If you look at the summary, okay. Now, here the memory, the default gig, CPU usage, egg, storage, it is. Getting a virtual machine that you shouldn't take that long. All right, so we take the test, test uh, virtual machine. So you can create as much as you want, but not as much as you, as you want actually. It depends on you. Also. All right, thank you guys. Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions, you can. Comments on the comment section. Um, if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe and also click the bell icon. That's how you get all, all kinds of updates. And on the next video, hopefully, I will show you guys uh, how you can um, create a <coughs> distributed suite. Thank you, guys. Bye.